All right, let's continue with domain 2.4. And now we're going to go over the actual indicators. So what we're talking about here is when we're doing our log diving, when we're looking over our monitoring, when we get alerts, what is a good indicator of potential compromise or of a potential exploit or a potential of somebody trying to exploit us, maybe a APT on our network or an external threat trying to gain access. So account lockout. So if we see an account lockout, Multiple times in a day, someone keeps calling the help desk, putting in tickets to unlock the account. Maybe that is a sign that their account's trying to be brute forced. Another indicator is concurrent session usage. So concurrent session usage refers to multiple access active sessions from the same user account, potentially indicating account compromise or sharing. So a lot of times like we can build up like anomaly based detection using heuristics or behavior patterns, like the time-based uh, time usage. So if we have concurrent sessions, again, on the West Coast, East Coast, and Europe, from the same user account at the same time, that's definitely a strong indicator that that account's been compromised. So what we can do is we can set security policies, we can do monitoring and alerts, and kind of have that zero trust framework in mind, saying, hey, we want to do anomaly detection, kind of like what banks do. That if we see a login that seems suspicious, that deviates from the usual behavior, we want to maybe enforce a second factor there, maybe even a third factor. Another indicator, blocked content. So blocked content refers to websites or materials that security systems prevent users from accessing due to potential security threats. So if a user keeps trying to go to a blocked website, Maybe we want to set up some alerting. Maybe we want to integrate threat intelligence feeds that can help in keeping the list of block content up to date for us, right? So it's kind of twofold. One, we want to maybe be aware if our users are consistently trying to access block content. And then two, as far as our defense in depth approach goes, maybe we want to always be on the up and up on what should be blocked because maybe some, there's always going to be updates to like our domain name blacklisting, right? impossible travel. So kind of what I've been talking about, right? Another indicator is that if we get login attempts from across the world, we should send up that alert and we should be doing contextual analysis on our logins to enforce either A, additional factors, or B, if you want to be really strict, lock down that account, right? Or C, maybe we have, uh, like banks do, a help desk ignition call that user and be like, hey, did your account recently get compromised? Let's work through this playbook and runbook I have to see if it's potentially compromised and when it could have happened, okay? Like, I either you use it to log into a site where you were victim of a phishing attack. Another indicator is resource consumption. If we're diving deep into our logs and we notice that for some reason, a bunch of our computers from the hours of 1 to 1 in the morning to 1.15 in the morning a big spike in network and compute resources, that could be a sign of a botnet happening in our environment. So we wanna do monitoring our system performance and to see if anything behaves outside of the normal pattern, okay? And if it does, we wanna to get to the root of it. Let's go inspect these devices, or maybe we have SIM or SIM already set up to indicate for us that we have uh, weird or suspicious resource consumption. Another indicator, resource inaccessibility. This refers to unexpected or unexplained issues preventing access to system resources, which could be an indicator of malicious activities or system compromise. So sudden denial of service, unreachable network drives or servers that happens throughout the day, disrupted access to critical data, this could all be signs that if your users are consistently complaining about uh, not being able to access a resource, that there could be something actually malicious happening on your network, like API, uh, excuse me, like DDoS attacks, botnets, or any malicious, something we just have to further investigate. Out of cycle logging. So out of cycle, out of cycle logging refers to unexpected, unscheduled, or unusual logging activities. Such anomalies in log generation or modification can be indicative of an ongoing attack or compromise. So let's say all of a sudden our log gets full at night. 
Well, if we have unexpected log volume, that should already raise a red flag, right? If we have unscheduled log creation or deletion, so logs, let's say in our SIM or whatever logging, maybe Azure Sentinel, keep appearing and disappearing outside normal schedule, maybe we've been compromised and someone has unauthorized access to our logging system. Other indicators published and, and documented. So there's gonna be published and documented IOCs that are gonna have, whether well, it's well-known CVEs, they're gonna have signatures and well-known patterns that we can integrate into our monitoring, okay? So we can use different frameworks. We can use different OSINT to tell our systems and to also educate us on what known attack patterns are. And we can share these indicators across multiple different platforms. And of course, our different security vendors. If we're subscribed to a security vendor like Cisco Talos or whatever the new uh, uh, you know, major vendors and security systems are, we can look at their published documentation and also try to integrate it into our systems. And then of course, missing logs. If we have unexplained log gaps or inconsistent inconsistencies in log sequences, as in it's not sequential, chronologically it's out of order, we may be dealing with compromised or unauthorized access, right? Something we have to be wary of and doing our log dives have to be cognizant and make sure that we look at the chronological order and have correct timestamps. Okay, let's go ahead and do our last quiz of domain 2.4. So this is going to be going over the different indicators in malicious activity. Okay, so question one. What type of security indicator is it when an organization's network firewall blocks an incoming file due to it being identified as malicious? So we're going to go here at blocked content, okay? So it's not going to be account lockout, right? That just doesn't make sense. Concurrent session usage, that's not an incoming file. That's just our users having weird uh, activity, right? Where they're logged in at. And it's not resource consumption. That would be us noticing CPU spikes, memory spikes. Question two, which indicator of compromise would be identified by a user being unable to access their account due to multiple failed login attempts in a short period. There's going to be account lockout. That's our indicator of compromise. If we notice account lockouts, that's a symptom, right? The actual attack will probably be like brute force, right? Password attacks. Question three, in the context of security, what does it indicate if an organization finds that certain expected logs are not present or have been deleted. So that's missing logs, right? Our indicator there is we have missing logs. That means there must be malicious activity. Question four, which indicator of compromise is often observed when an attacker is consuming network bandwidth, processing power, or disk space to the point that regular operations are impaired? So that's gonna, I'm gonna go with the resource consumption here. So resource consumption is an IOC that refers to the excessive use of system resources. Question five, what does it indicate when a system rec records log entries at unusual times that don't align with typical business operations or maintenance schedules? That's gonna be out of cycle logging. When something goes beyond the norm or is not part of the normal behavior, that's gonna be an IOC for us. Question six, if a system administrator notices that the same user account is logged in from two geographically distant locations within an impossible time frame, which indicator of malicious activity does this represent? That's going to be impossible travel, right? If it's geographically distant, it's not going to be possible they can be logged in at the same time. 